storybooks, record books, history books. They're all written here. It's an angler's Shangri-La that has seen bamboo rods beget graphite ones. Its waters have recorded countless world records of various species, tackle, and line classes, which have been bested time and again. The tournaments have etched name after name on trophy plaques until they ran out of space. Greenhorns and icons walk the same docks. The fishing community's love of this place crosses generations, from grandfathers to grandsons, seniors to juniors, mentors to students. The fishing grounds are a tapestry of species and ecosystems, the tangled mangrove roots that fringe along the edges. Every angler hopes to join its fabled history, but sometimes the fiery old giant barks at fresh faces and puts them up against high expectations. We have to pull this off, but how? With luck? Experience? A little of both? Does a legend make the land or does the land make the legend? Baseball has Fenway Park. Golf has St. Andrews. Sport fishing has Isla Mirada. For such a historic destination, time stops in Isla Mirada. It must be the even-tempered oceans on both sides of the overseas highway, giving the effect that the world has slowed to a standstill. Heading south and watching the mile markers drop away makes you feel like the United States is just some inconsequential landmass in the rearview mirror. The islands up ahead are it, the only home an angler needs. Isla Mirada is comprised of a half dozen islands. It's a sandy ellipsis that separates the entangled wilderness of Everglades National Park and the inky blue of the Florida Strait. Its optimal location set the table for its renowned status. The Gulf Stream flows past the islands 10 to 20 miles offshore, bringing offshore species close enough to be targeted by anglers and skiffs bay boats, and kayaks. As the Miami Herald reported some 60 years ago, strikes were as frequent as sunny days. And specimens that would be record catches in other parts of the world were tossed disdainfully overboard to grow up. From there, the sport took wing. Saltwater fly fishing and backcountry sport fishing were pioneered in Isla Mirada in the 1940s and 1950s. Tournaments graduated from brand new to historic at Bud and Mary's, charter captains are as plentiful as blackjack dealers in Vegas. Seven square miles of islands, mere specks on the globe, yet it owns the title of sport fishing capital of the world. Isla Mirada also claims the crown jewel of fishing lodges. Chica Lodge and Spa sits on 27 acres of manicured paradise right on the Atlantic its iconic 525-foot wooden pier jutting out over the marbled water. It opened in 1946 and has welcomed fishing luminaries, celebrities, and presidents ever since. For the past 26 years, Chica Lodge has hosted the Presidential Sailfish Tournament, founded by President George H.W. Bush in 1990. Every January, it attracts anglers from every continent. This year, facing heavy rainstorms and 40 mile per hour gust. 79 anglers fished on 22 boats and released 50 sailfish. But it's not the only story competition in town. Known as the Wimbledon of tarpon fishing, the Gold Cup is a magnet for next level fishing addicts who target the Silver King with a fly. I'm a rare old man, my life is on the track. 
2016 marks the tournament's 53rd anniversary. It's a chance not only to have your name engraved on the trophy, but to test your skills, to interpret the conditions, read the tide changes, and feel the rush only a tarpon can bring. A gaping guild contortionist spring-loaded with a hot temper. In the land of old salts, an energetic upstart is hard to find. Forget about the past for a moment. This young guide is making his own way. Sport Fishing Television is brought to you by Ram Trucks. Powered by Ram Trucks. Guts. Glory. Ram. By Yellowfin. Your legacy. By Simrad. Go with confidence. And by Mercury Marine. Number one on the water. Meet the next class of Florida Keys guides. Captain Michael Venezia of Boned Up Charters just celebrated his second year anniversary as a professional guide in Isla Mirada. Mike hails from Fort Lauderdale, but permanently moved to Isla Mirada after high school. His charter service works the Florida Keys backcountry, Everglades National Park, and Florida Bay. Isla Mirada to me is my home. I get to run around in a skiff and, you know, in the backcountry in Everglades from snook and red fishing to tarpon in the springtime to fly rods to bait, the possibilities are endless. You know, we get conditions in the wintertime, we can go and hit the shallow patches, and I mean, it just, it goes on and on and on. Mike is not a newbie, and certainly not a vet. He's in one of those life stages that's about finding the ins and outs of a career. Working for the action, which means more experience. Each day is a notch on the belt. For most, Isla Mirada is a destination, a vacation that takes special planning and savings. For Mike, it's a home address. And with any home, protection is key to its survival. Mike is a big proponent of the Bonefish and Tarpon Trust, which is dedicated to the conservation of bonefish, tarpon, and permit. BTT invests in research to address concerns and increase education. I'm part of the Florida Keys Fishing Guides Association, and uh, we're really focusing now with the, uh, the Bonefish Tarpon Trust, uh, with bonefish clippings and taggings, really trying to figure out where our bonefish are coming from, where our tarpon are coming from, where they're going, how these populations are moving around and, and reproducing, and we need to get the water quality under control. We've got hundreds of guides in Alan Rada, and uh, so there's a lot of information from the fishing side as well as from the scientific side. After all, Better informed anglers and guides make better stewards of the fisheries. The Florida Keys. The name alone summons warmth. Official weather records have been kept here for 150 years. That's 55,000 days and not a single snowflake. Nevertheless, January is peak season for cold fronts. And when the snap comes and it's blowing 25 knots from the north, the water temperature drops and the water is churned into a dirty haze. And the fish, gone. The fish finder, blank. Here I am, trying to make a fishing show in waters that woke up on the wrong side of the bed. Pulling this off would be legendary. We're in the first, the first creek coming in here. That splits. Yeah, there's creeks and stuff up in here, little runoffs and ditches. Got a lot of options. This cold front creates less than ideal conditions. There's a small craft advisory in effect. Going offshore isn't an option. So it's off to the backcountry, Florida Bay. It provides better protection from the wind and plenty of inshore species call it home. We get a live shrimp and uh Thread it on there and see if we can get a snook, red, maybe a black drum, something good. <laughs> Where did this guy come from? When you're snook fishing, a recent cold front blowing hard on the water is the last thing you want. 
Typically, you wait until the weather changes, then target snook on the third or fourth day of a warm-up. That's when they really make a reel's drag work overtime. <laughs> oh, nice speckle. Spotted sea trout are popular throughout Florida and the Gulf Coast. And in the boat he comes. Woo! All right. For the southern angler, the gator trout conjures visions of gaping yellow mouths, sagging bellies, and near yardstick dimensions. Look at that. I got my shrimp back and everything. I'm ready to go. While schoolies like this can easily be fooled, true gators are among the most challenging adversaries on the flats. A true understanding of Isla Mirada can be found in a panorama of its past. No one has a better 360 degree view than the man who calls it home for 50 years and puts saltwater fly fishing in the limelight. Sport Fishing Television, powered by Ram Trucks, is being brought to you by Yeti Coolers, built for the wild. By Penn, let the battle begin and by the Florida Keys and Key West. Come as you are. Driven to Fish, powered by Ram Trucks. Mike is at the beginning of his history, figuring out what roads to turn on, finding the right mix of experience and education. Nothing is more educational than time itself. You have to start somewhere. That newcomer to the dock might one day turn into a world record holder. Better yet, a person synonymous with a sport. Today, Stu and his guide have an unexpected pleasure, the company of Florida's Citrus Queen, who just had to be shown. She couldn't believe that Stu goes after these giant toppin' with a fly rod. The best toppin' water is shallow, at most three to six feet deep, where the guide can pull the boat along silently. And the angler can actually stalk a single fish. And here he is. With legends come questions. And this is the right man to answer them. He's guided likes of President Harry Truman, General Norman Schwarzkopf, and Baseball Hall of Famer Ted Williams. He spent time with Hemingway in Havana, a Navy fighter pilot in the Korean War conflict, and a Pan Am pilot for 34 years. An inventor of knots, techniques, gear, a multiple world record holder and Hall of Famer, an Isla Mirada local and a saltwater fishing hero. This is the man. Stu Apt. This big old tarpon here is a full-size replica of one of my two world records I caught in one day on 12-pound tippet. This is the size, exact dimensions of the 164-pounder. Everybody should get one like that sometime in their life. It's worthwhile. I hate to step on you.
When I got laid off from Pan Am, my dad said, son, what are you going to do? Go to work for United or TWA or American Airlines? And I said, dad, no. I'm going to be a backcountry guide in the Florida Keys. One of my early trips to Almorada, got there, put the boat in the water. As I was approaching Nama Bank, I saw all these big things in the bottom, and I thought that they were big trees that had been blown down by a previous hurricane. No, the bottom started to move. These trees moved. They were monster tarpon, and that was my first time, and I couldn't wait till I could really get out and fish those fish. And that was a learning process that took me a while, but I did learn to the point where set the world record on tarpon on fly numerous occasions, twice in one day. And that's when he started making a name for himself. I was on the water for hire. You couldn't get me for next year. You'd have to get me a booking for the following year after that. He's seen Isla Mirada evolve over 60 years and knows the ingredients to its secret formula. Almorada back in the 1940s was a small fishing village. It's borderline on the Gulf Stream, very close to the Gulf Stream on the ocean side, the Atlantic side, and very close to the backcountry. Probably having some of the very best backcountry and offshore captains in the whole world has helped Almorada become the sport fishing capital of the world. They have hundreds of skiff guides for backcountry fishing. You can fish anywhere and for most any kind of fish numerous times of the year in Almorada. I love it here. That's why I live here. These are what I call the good old days of tomorrow. In his book, My Life in Fishing, Favorite Long Stories Told Short, Stu makes a connection between his birthday and the sport. Even my birthday seemed to have been connected to the Florida's best fishing. For whatever it's worth, the fact is that more records of tarpon have been caught on May 11th, my birthday, than on any other day. He's got some words of wisdom for the next crop of guides planting seeds here. Don't give up your day job. Sport Fishing Television is being brought to you by Ram Trucks, powered by Ram Trucks. Guts, glory, Ram. By King Sailfish Mounts, for that once in a lifetime catch. By Costa Sunglasses, see what's out there. And by the Florida Keys and Key West, come as you are. I've been asked many times, what advice do I have? What advice can I give a new guide that wants to start guiding in the Almorada area? My main advice would be, do not give up your day job. Back in the old days, they used to have what was called the Fabulous 100, where everybody with a boat was on the water for hire because of the influx of tourists. Get out here and fish and scout the area, get to where you know it well enough, where you can give the old time guides some competition. That's what I tell you. And now we see the earliest chapters of Stu's life in fishing in the next generation. Ooh. <laughs> we could sit down and have lunch if we wanted to. Well, let's put him to good use. <laughs> the black drum has been relegated to second-class citizenry on the drum family tree, as their redfish brethren continue to hold all-star status. However, the off-maline black drum are worth your attention. Yeah, if I could drum, I'd drum back at you. Yep. The little drummer boy. Not a monster, but he's a drummer. We'll take what we can get. These homely bottom dwellers offer horsepower to test even the stoutest gear. And to some, they make for pleasing table fare. When winters chill and stiff winds send name brand species like snook running, black drums stay behind in the mostly abandoned waters. 
Maybe that's because black drum don't move very quickly, except when they have a hook in their face. Then it's another story. Not the most epic outing. Sometimes you gotta catch what's biting. Our turn at legendary status, it's on hold for now. But Mike never slowed down or gave up. That's because he's a charter guide in Isla Mirada. His dream is already his life, what so many of us hope for. I get lost sometimes, you know, when I'm, I'm running my skiff in the morning and, you know, I know where I'm going, I'm just kind of driving along. I just look around and I, I'm very, very grateful, you know, I get to do this for a living. Sure, there may come a day when Mike is tired and worn, up against the tides of time, but that day will have to wait, or it may never come. Stu was once a greenhorn. Next thing you know, one of his fly creations is on a postage stamp. That story is possible in Isla Mirada. Over years and decades, anglers graduate from rookie to respected to icon. So be mindful of who you're standing next to. 10 years from now, they might be the next Hall of Famer or the star of the tallest fish tale told on Bud and Mary's docks. Even as a visitor, you have a chance to catch the biggest fish of your life. Guides like Mike and Stu take you there. So, does the legend make the land or the land the legend? Neither. They coexist. There is no one without the other. It's hard for a legend to shine in a dark spot. And the richest fishery in the world won't provide if the angler doesn't respect its worth. Mike and Stu are bookends to an anthology already recorded and still being written. So go on. Join the story.